guys and welcome back to Art of the Heart. Many of you guys have seen this print or this picture that I have done, my Galaxy Owl, which is in my top five favorite pictures I've done. And one of the few pieces I have completed that I totally did not record. And I've gotten so many questions on how did I paint that? Can I do a tutorial on that? And to tell you the truth, it was a complete accident. It was just playing around with color. So I'm going to try to recreate, not the exact same piece, but recreate the style of painting yet again. This time we're going to record it and let's see what happens. So I'm going to be doing this in watercolor. So I have taped my watercolor paper down to my table. It's going to help with the warping. I'm going to be adding a ton of water, a ton of layers to this. So I want to make sure first that my watercolor paper is a really good quality watercolor and two, that it's taped down. And I found as I'm working on this, that my watercolor paper was not the quality I thought it was. I, I had a piece of this paper and I thought it was my really good stuff. And I don't think it was because it turned out okay, but it really was starting to, to disintegrate towards the end. It wasn't going to take much more painting than what I put on it. So for this piece, I wanted to do another bird, kind of a galaxy bird, but I didn't want to do an owl. So as some of you know, I've had a little bit of the raven and crow inspiration lately due to the, the book that I wrote um, from the Choose Your Own Adventure story. And so I decided to do a, a raven. So I first sketched it out in pencil and then erased almost all of the pencil marks so I can just lightly see. As we begin to paint this, things are going to spread and, and, and go over that you really don't have to have this drawn out so much. I just wanted to kind of have an idea where the bird was in this painting. Now, after I got that part done, I need to prime my paints. I use a paint palette that has all tube paints, but they've dried. So they work just like a little brick or, or cake of watercolor. So to get them activated better, I just take a little mister and I mist all my paints and that just kind of wakes them up a little bit, makes it easier to get them um, back into a liquid form. I also went ahead and misted the paper just very lightly so that the paper is kind of primed and ready to go. And then begins the extremely long and time consuming process of applying colors. I'm just going to tell you right now that there are layers upon layers upon layers here. And this background changes a lot. There are going to be times that it's going to look bad. There's going to be times that it really looks cool. And then I make it look bad. There are times I want to give up on this. There'll be times that you might want me to give up on this. But this is the journey. The journey of the galaxy raven, or the raven of the galaxy. I'm, I haven't named it yet. I'm going to begin speeding through this because this painting took a really long time to do, even though it was so tiny. So the color palette, I want the whole rainbow. I want all the different colors in there. And so I just begin to lay the colors in. I have a little tissue paper. So when the water begins to pool a little bit, I can take the tissue paper and it's really absorbent. So the water soaks back up into the tissue, but it also takes up some of the, the colors. So you just build those colors up slowly. So I'm, I'm wanting to lay down my brightest colors first. I don't want the sky ultimately to be this bright in the end, but I want these bright undertones. And then you'll see I begin to lay in my blacks to kind of tone things down just a little bit. Another interesting thing to take notice of is the quality of paints. So the palette I'm using is kind of my play with palette. Um, it's not my best quality paints. It has some of my really good quality paints in it, but it also has some of my student grade paints and you probably if you pay attention to how the paint spreads in this painting, we'll be able to tell which of my paints are higher quality, especially like the yellow. When you see the yellow touch the paper, it just spreads and is vibrant where there are some others like my green that just don't have enough oomph. So if you're really curious, what's the difference between student grade watercolors and professional watercolors, aside from a lot of money, well, there you can kind of see the difference. There is a vast difference between those two. As I'm working through this painting, you'll notice that paint is starting to get smeared onto or over the shape that I'm reserved for the raven. I'm not really going to worry about that. Um, as I get done with the first coat of paint and let it dry, it's all going to kind of bleed together 
and then I'll begin to go in with a second coat of, of paint, or the second big wash, and begin to kind of crisp things up a little bit. Because this is a galaxy painting, I, I want colors to kind of merge in there, and the I don't want things to be like a natural color. So when this is done, you're going to see that the, the raven will hopefully have a lot of different colors in it as well. So I just kind of want to know where that bird's going to be so I don't lose it. But if paint bleeds over into that area, it's not that big of a deal at this point. This is still technically the first official wash, even though I'm putting lots of colors down, tapping them out, putting another coat over. There's lots of glazes in each one but I haven't left this yet completely dry. So one of the techniques with watercolor painting is to put down a glaze or a wash, then let that dry, and then you can begin working over top of that. Once watercolor paint dries to the paper, though you can still lift it up and move it around a little bit, it's a, it's a little bit harder to do that. So you wanna put your colors in how you want them, let them dry, then you can begin to build the colors up on top of that. So that's what I'm trying to do here placing all these colors in here. I'm still wanting to keep some lighter areas, but as I'm working, I'm progressively getting a little bit more darker in my colors, getting those rich colors going in there. Here, I'm going to go ahead and dabble off a lot of the excess paint, and I'm going to let this one completely dry. One thing you'll notice is when the watercolor dries, it lightens a lot when it dries. So don't be worried about things being really dark when they're wet. As it dries, the paint is going to lighten up naturally. So also keep that in mind. If you're really wanting a nice dark, you might have to go over it a couple of times before you get that really richness that you're looking for in watercolor. So now I'm going to go over with the second coat of paint now that the first coat is completely dried. And this is where I'm going to really begin to push in my colors and, and my deep, rich tones. But again, this is kind of a rinse wash and repeat. Laying in colors, dabbing them off, putting in colors, putting in dark, just playing around with things. There are so many times in this painting that I loved how something looked and I thought I'm just going to try this little technique and then totally messed it up and I lost that tone. I went, oh, I wish I could have that tone. Originally, I really wanted to kind of have the same palette as the Galaxy Owl, lots of reds and purples and blues, but I found that the colors that really kind of became more prominent in this painting were the yellows and um, the blacks. There was a little bit of greens and blues and, and purpley pinks in there, but the yellow really began to stand out through there. Another tool that I introduced into this painting was some white ink. I really wanted to kind of have some star bursts in my galaxy. The whole theme of these kinds of paintings is playing with. I, I posted a picture of this halfway through and said I was playing with some paints. And I had a couple of people message me and, and say, You're, you call this playing with paints? And for me, it is. I mean, it's bonus points if I can actually get something that turns out nice. But this is me testing the limits of what the paints will do what they will do when interacting with other art mediums and what the paper can do, how much the paper can handle. So a side note on the paper, as I said earlier, this paper wasn't the brand I thought it was because it was just a loose sheet of paper in my paper bin. I knew pretty early on as I began to lay in the, the water that if I actually moved the brush around a lot on the paper, that it was going to begin to roll and, and peel up the, the actual paper. So a technique, if you don't have the best quality of paper and you find that as you paint on the, the art paper, it begins to roll up, is to not pull or push your brush along there. And that's more to dab it on top. So I'm actually just more tapping the paint where I want it to go. There's a couple places that I very lightly will drag the paintbrush across, but for most parts, I'm just dabbing. Also letting your paper rest and dry a little bit can also help save it if you have a lot of work you're going to be doing on it. So those are my two tips for working with paper that is having a hard time holding up if you don't have any other options for, for art paper. Not saying that this paper was bad. It was, it was good. I could definitely tell the difference between this brand and the brand that I thought it was going to be. So at this point, I'm getting to where I like what's going on in the painting. It's not there yet, but I can see the potential. I can see what it can be. So now I'm going to begin to define out my shapes, out the patterns. This is a not a realistic painting, of course. 
Um, so I'm painting with shapes and colors rather than with figures and feathers. I'm just having fun with this. As you can see, I'm, I'm bringing the black off of the face and kind of making these wispy little trails into the, into the night sky and, and kind of bringing out brighter colors by pushing in darker colors underneath them. The thought of playing with your art supplies and not caring if you mess up, almost expecting to mess up. There was a good 25% chance that this painting was going to turn out. I've done a few others of these and they have not turned out. Luckily, this one actually did turn out and I really like how it did turn out. So now comes one of my favorite parts of doing a galaxy painting and that is adding the stars. When you do a splatter technique, especially with white ink that stains everything is make sure you have a very well protected work surface and that your clothes are protected so wearing a painting smock or I took my bathrobe and put it on backwards so that if the paint got on my bathrobe didn't care and then you hit the paintbrush on another object like a paintbrush and then it speckles knowing full well you have no control of where these splatters are going to go and or how much I will say the first couple taps is when you're probably going to get your biggest spots and then as you continue to tap as the paint has lessened in that paintbrush you'll get your finer misty kind of speckles there as well so at this point i'm pretty much done with the heavy water color part i'm going to go ahead and remove the the tape so that i can see the piece and i just love how it looks when you have that really nice white border edge so the last step in this is going in and refining in some details because you could totally just leave it as this. It's kind of really uh, kind of a fuzzy uh, picture, but I like to go in with an ink pen. I'm using a um, kind of a marker pen and I am tracing out the shapes and designs made by the paint bleeding in together and working. And I just follow these shapes along and it creates this really cool technique as you go along and it helps to find out these this this paint it's it's fun it's fascinating to see how it happens and i really like how it looks sometimes i'll add a little bit of a darker shadow underneath to kind of really push uh, levels and layers back and bring things forward a little bit it's it's a messy risky style because again you just don't know if it's going to turn out or if you almost have it turn out and then mess it up at the end. But I guess that's kind of half the fun of creating something like this is just not knowing. It's kind of the risk, the gamble of the painting is you could do all this work and the very end you do something you go, oh, well, that just ruins it. If you guys try a technique like this, I would love to see your pictures so you can share them with me on social media. I'll leave all the links to my social media in the description box of this video. If you enjoyed this piece here and would like to see other videos in my art collection, make sure to hit that subscribe button and then you can check out some of my videos in my video archives. If you like this piece enough that you would like to possibly purchase it or a print of it, I will have links to my online stores. Well, thank you for coming along this crazy journey with me as I create this galaxy raven piece if there's a, some sort of animal that you think would translate well into this style let me know in the comment section below I'd be kind of interested to to hear your guys's thoughts on that and who knows I might create a piece based on that well as always thank you so much for hanging out with me in this video and until next time God bless you guys and we'll see you in another art video bye bye